next on our list, the Hall of the Presidents, a celebration of Liberty's leaders. Number 11. Those of you who hate this one, why is it not number 14, Jesse? Well, there's several reasons. One reason, it's, yes. One reason is it's air conditioned. Yeah, so it's a great place to take naps. That's why I do have a number 11, actually. I was thinking that. It's a big reason why. Bus plus the waiting area in here is a nice, it's like a little museum. Got all these, just this alone is worth coming into. Have all these. pieces from past presidents that's been donated. These are all authentic artifacts. Couldn't guess this is from Theodore Roosevelt. We have Benjamin Harrison's walking stick. Benjamin Harrison is actually from my home state and from our capital city of Indianapolis. Coming up to one of them, coming up to my favorite president, but I won't mention any names. This program is dedicated to the memory of Walt Disney. In 1971, his love for America inspired the creation of the Hall of Presidents, a place to celebrate the optimism and goodwill he saw at the heart of the American story. Walt's vision was to honor the nation by honoring the American presidency. election, 
It's Washington by a landslide. The only doubt seems to be his own. He writes, Integrity and firmness is all I can promise. Integrity and firmness is exactly what we need. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here, have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note, nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us. These dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. The blood of over half a million Americans is spilled in this civil war. President Lincoln's enduring hope is to give true meaning to the sacrifices of so many. To a new birth truly begins. As we roll toward the 20th century, settlers roll west on wagon wheels and railroads connect the nation coast to coast. Millions of immigrants pour in from Europe and Asia. Population doubles. Our economy triples. Our standing among nations rises. We need presidents who can lead both at home and abroad. At the same time, a young Theodore Roosevelt is retreating from New York politics and personal tragedy. The death of his wife and his mother on the same day in the same house. In the Badlands of North Dakota, he rethinks his life and the life of his country. He returns stronger in body and spirit. His renewed energy is just what his country needs. American industry is booming, but social tensions are rising. A progressive movement is bubbling up, pushing for change. And change is needed in the working and living conditions in cities. The gap widens between rich and poor. The demand for change grows stronger. Teddy Roosevelt is a knight on a crusade. He speaks with force and vitality in clear terms that make colorful headlines at a time when mass market newspapers have become the new media. Softly and carry a big stick, but his greatest accomplishments are made at home. He breaks up giant monopolies, protects workers' rights, and calls for a square deal for all Americans, rich and poor, capitalist and wage earner. And Roosevelt, paralyzed by polio, knows how to restore the faith of a people 
paralyzed by the Great Depression. I believe in practical explanations and in practical policy. He has found the inner strength his countrymen now need. He speaks to us like a friend, a neighbor. His optimism is contagious, his voice perfect for the latest breakthrough medium, radio. He calls us to believe we have nothing to fear but fear itself. And we do believe. Tonight's attacks on England are perhaps the most widespread of the war in the course of the days. But an even greater challenge dominates his final years in office. The Second World War. Than 
had notification on the 14th day of April, 1789, that you had selected me to lead our nation. But it was with the confidence of my fellow citizens that I took an oath. 35 simple words that have been repeated by every American president throughout history. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States, and I will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. The Presidency of the United States is a role unique in the world an office entrusted to each president by us, we the people. Therein lies the genius of that new idea, now over 200 years old. A new idea our presidents have turned into a great American idea again and again. guys that's it from magic kingdom's hall of presidents hope you enjoyed the show including the uh applause there towards the end for one of our previous presidents from the uh, peanut gallery <laughs> anyway hopefully you enjoyed the show and as always remember disney is the place where dreams do come true <laughs> until next time guys we'll see ya